Well, we had a showery summer and it looks like we're having a showery autumn, but this is the busiest time of the year in orchards all over the country. And here in High Bank Organic Orchard in County Kilkenny, the apple harvest is just about to get underway. But as recently as 2008, the owners of this orchard, Rod and Julie Calderpotts, faced financial ruin. With no market for their apples, they needed a new idea and fast if a business that had been in the family since the 1920s was to survive. Julie, you came to the stage where growing apples wasn't enough to keep the farm going. Completely. Um, we were a very small farm here. We had a beautiful raw material and uh, no money because uh, here we are in a recessional circumstances. So we had to look into ourselves and try and see if we could add value by processing to get directly to the consumer. And it was while experimenting at the cooker that Julie invented the product that would save the farm. I was messing around in the kitchen <laughs> and uh, with a product saying there must be something in this, went to answer the phone and here we came back to a wonderful uh, saucepan full of what became orchard syrup. High bank apple syrup was like nothing else on the market and became an immediate success. But the Calderpots didn't rest on their laurels. Continue really intense. Mm. Strong flavour. Just organic apples, nothing else. You decided to step into distilling. Well, that came from the syrup because our wonderful cocktail uh, mixologist started to take our syrup to put with whiskey. And uh, that actually made us think that it m must have some nice tannins that could actually be used to put into a brandy. But whether you want to make a syrup or an alcoholic spirit, you need to start with a really good apple juice. I joined Rod for a taste of the first of this year's crop. Is this an anxious moment for you, Rod? It is, yeah, because uh, th this year has been kind of dull uh, and we need, what we're looking for is sugar, we're looking for the sweetness in that. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, isn't that nice? Really mm. sweet, really, really mm. sweet. Last year, the Calderpots took the brave step of building their own distillery, the smallest in Ireland. The apple juice goes into this kettle, and then the... You can see it bubbling away inside. Bubbling away inside there. Now the uh, water jacket is, uh, is heating the, the cider gently and very evenly. And uh, the vapours come off, and uh, basically we're, we're taking off the alcohols. But we have to be careful, because some of them are not nice, or actually poisonous. So with this very sophisticated machine here, we're able to separate them very, very cleanly and take out all of the acetone, all of the methyl alcohol, and we're left with a very clean spirit at the end of the day. And all the flavors, they come off as well. We try to, that's the skill of the distiller, to make sure that the flavors are all uh, intact. From the raw apple spirit, Rod and Julie make everything from vodka to brandy liqueur and their latest product, gin. Rod, apples aren't things that you normally associate with gin. There are other added ingredients. Yes. So what makes your gin special? Yeah. Well, what makes our gin special, first of all, is the apple, because most gins are made from a neutral alcohol. To qualify as gin, it must be over 37% alcohol, and with the primary flavor coming from juniper berries. Are these organic junipers, Rod? Where they do they are. come from? Absolutely. We can't use anything unless it's organic. So these come from France, okay. certified organic. We do use other botanicals. The flavors that we put in are generally called botanicals. So this is our own lavender, and the limes and the lemons we have to buy. We actually only use the peels, but we do grow our own coriander, we have rose hips, we have blackcurrant buds, and various other botanicals that are, are, are put into it. Does the flavor of it change depending on the season, depending Absolutely. on the crop of apples? Yeah, yeah. Anything, anything agricultural is going to be different every year. If it's the same, it's industrial. Being something of a gin and tonic enthusiast, I was eager to taste High Bank Orchard's Crystal Gin. And you're pouring it into a bowl for me, Julie. I'm throwing it into <laughs> what's called a rinser, which yeah, is about 200 years old. Wow. Made in cork. Made in cork. And we put a little bit of lime and, of course, a slice of apple. The uh, idea of putting a little bit of apple in there is to give people a hint as to where the flavours are coming from. You know, you taste something by itself, out of context, and you kind of think, well, what's, what's happening here? Where's that flavor coming from? And when there's a little bit of apple in it, it I think it helps the, the drinker to understand what's, what's going on. 
That is beautiful. Yeah. That is really fresh yeah. and kind of crisp. That is a beautiful drink. It is, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, I think I might have to get a taxi to our next location. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can drive after that. That is really lovely. Thank you. Gin is a drink undergoing something of a revival, and Irish craft producers are now making gins to rival some of the best from around the world. So distilling gin isn't new to Ireland? No, it's been done in Ireland for, in, it goes back through our history books, but um, the, the more recent revival has seen a lot of more of the smaller craft gin producers in Ireland, um, like High Bank Orchard, uh, Blackwater from Waterford, We've got short crust gin uh, up in Northern Ireland um, and Dingle Gin, of course, was one of the first distilleries to pop up. Is there a consumer demand there? Because we are talking high-end products. Yeah, I think there definitely is. It's coming hand in hand with a time in Ireland where people are really starting to see the value in homegrown produce and home-produced produce. We've seen it with craft beers as well, and now we're seeing it with gin. There's also vodkas and whiskies, obviously. And I think people are willing to pay more for an Irish-produced product, in a lot of cases handcrafted. And these are small producers, so the amount of effort that goes into them is is worth the money, is seen to be worth the money. Cheers. Cheers. Now, a lot of people mm. watching this who may have uh, small farms and would think of adding value to their product, but they would say, that sounds like an impossible task. How do you brand yourself? How do you label yourself? Where do you source your bottles from? But you've done all this yourself. We have, and I would encourage, I think the future of small farming and small producers in Ireland is to add value. I mean, we've got a wonderful, wonderful raw products in Ireland from our dairy industry to our meat industry. I think, I think uh, start small, we're still small and we will stay small. We're not huge, we're not hugely industrial. You don't have to be because I think our, our consumers are waking up to the fact of good valued food and supporting their farmers. Here we have this wonderful uh, raw material and I don't think we've finished yet. I think there's a few more products out there. I don't yeah. doubt it. <laughs> Next week on Ear...